Hello everybody, welcome to another Fab Lab tutorial. In this tutorial, we're actually going to go through a brainstorm uh, design idea for a door nameplate, gather whatever information we need uh, to complete this project, and then design a door nameplate that you can put on your classroom. So the nameplate that I'm gonna try to design today is this one here. So this is what it looks like when it was been printed out and it's putting on my classroom door. This is what it looked like when my design was finished. So we're gonna go through and just I'll show you how to make something like this. Then you can design your own to put on your own classroom door. So let's first thing about what we might need to do. So a couple things you know when we do a project, we know how big we want it to be, especially for like a, a nameplate for your desk or for your door or a business card or anything like that. In this case, we're going to make this 10 inches wide by two and a half inches high. It can be any size you want, but taking down these measurements beforehand, just kind of getting an idea of knowing what, um, how big you want something to be, where it'll fit is usually a good idea before you go in and actually do your design and cut it out and see later on that it doesn't fit where you want it to. So I kind of measured some space in my door and I know how big I want it to be. So that's gonna be our starting thing. I also went through and thought about what types of um, uh, information I wanted to my nameplate. And for my case, I want my name. I want my classroom number. I also put a couple logos on here since my classroom is used for my physics classes and it's also used as a temporary fab lab. I put a logo for our science department and a logo for fab build. I was gonna put on my door nameplate showing off what it is. And then also threw a little decoration here on the bottom. Uh, one more thing I added to mine was a couple screw holes here because mine I actually screwed onto my door. If you wanted to tape it on or something like that, you wouldn't need those, but I wanted to and I ended up putting bolts through those to put on the door. So those are the things I kind of measured beforehand. And now we're going to go through and make this. So I have a blank file and I actually put a couple pieces of art in here. Again, you can, you can get art yourself. If you watch some of the other videos about tracing art and using it in your, in your designs, I kind of just threw them in here just to save us a little bit of time. So I have our science department logo, our fab build logo, and this horizontal line that I'm, or kind of decorative effect I want to use for, for my design. I also threw in, I already created some layers that we talked about in one of the other videos. So here I have a layer for the cuts I'm going to make. I have a layer for the logos. I have a layer for my name I'm going to put on. I have a layer for, the decor, for this decoration. And I have a layer for my classroom number. So I'm gonna start by putting these elements on the correct layers. So I'm just gonna highlight these, right click, move those to the logos layer, move this to the decoration layer. And I'm gonna start by working on the cuts layer. So I'll select that and I'm just gonna draw a regular rectangle. Uh, looks like I drew a curved rectangle last time. I was gonna show you that, but so usually rectangles are drawn like that, normal rectangles. There is, if you haven't watched one of the other videos, if you wanna curve the edges of your rectangles, when they're in this rectangle, um, editing space here. Now, if you click, it stays here right after you draw a rectangle, but if you click somewhere else by mistake, you can always get back by clicking on your rectangle and clicking on the rectangle button with the rectangle selected and it'll bring you back into that. And if you notice, there are two squares in these two corners, which kind of lets you change the size of the rectangle. There's also a little dot in one corner. That little dot lets you actually change the curvature. So if you want to curve your edges, you can grab that dot, move it around and make your um, rectangle look whatever you look whatever curved way you want. You also might notice if you look up here, especially right here where it says RY, if I drag this around that number changes. So I can actually set this to be an exact curvature if I wanted to for some reason. Let's say I make it 0.4. That dials in the exact curvature of that. Usually I do this just by eye, whatever looks good, but if you really want to, this actually controls how curvy that is. So that's, I'm going to set that as the outline for my door or for my plate. Now I need to make sure I have the correct size. So again, once I made it, I'm gonna click on it, go up here to the top. I will say I wanted the width. So W is the width of my element. Um, H is the height. So I want the width to be 10. Oops, that's not 10. And I want the height, I think I said to be two and a half. So there's my outline. I'm gonna put it pretty close to the top left-hand corner up here. All right, there's a good start. I'm also going to, right now, I'm gonna just make it white. I should make it clear because it's just an outline cut. And I'm gonna hold down shift and click a color and give it an outline. Now the outline is really fine here. If I zoom in, you can kind of see it. I'm gonna right now make it a little bit thicker. Remember control shift F brings up the color dialog. I'm gonna go to the stroke. Remember that is the outline of our shapes. And I'm gonna go to stroke style and make this a little bit thicker just so we can see it. Now, if you've gone through some of the cutting videos, you know that for our epilogue machine, 
The way we tell it to cut is by making the stroke exactly 0 0.001. So I'm, I'm going to do this at the end when I cut it out. Make it 0 0.001. The problem is when you do a tutorial, it's kind of hard to see if it's that thin. So I'm just going to kind of temporarily make it thicker just so we can see it. So there's my outline. I'm going to also do my holes right now. So I'm going to click on the circle. Now, when you draw your circle, it can be um, weirdly shaped. If you hold down control when you draw a circle, it actually stays a circle. It doesn't If you don't hold it down, it turns into an ellipse, if, unless you're really, really good with the mouse. So I'm going to hold down control. And make, I'm just going to make a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's the circle because we're going to type in our exact value. So I'll move it up here a little bit. I'm going to go up to the top again, and I want this circle to be 0.2 by 0.2. That's the... Um, size of the bolt I'm going to use and now I'm going to I'm going to kind of in this case I'm going to kind of just freehand where I think I want this to be basically how far away from the edge I want it to be and what I can do now is I'm going to click on my rectangle click on the circle hit control shift a if you haven't gone through any of those videos that's the align toolbar and this lets me these functions here let me align things to each other. Now I have first selected picked up here. Yours probably might, if this is the first time you're using it on your computer, it might say selection area. I would say changes to first selected. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna, the first thing you select, which in this case was my outline rectangle is not gonna move. Whatever else I select after that, let me just move this circle somewhere so we can see what it does. I select the rectangle, select the circle. When I click for example this button here it's going to align them to the center of each other but it's not going to move the first thing i selected so that circle jumps down and now it's exactly in the middle now i want another one over here so i could hit Control d that's duplicate and then slide this over here and now i could do the same thing right i could bring it there shift select both of those and then up center and up and down now it doesn't look too bad but i mean i just hand place that so it's not exactly perfectly on the edge the same distance in from each side so I, I'm a little bit uh, crazy about some of this stuff so that would annoy me and I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I left it that way you might be able to if you can that's fine but I'm gonna show you a little trick that kind of can make can fix this so I kind of place these about where I want them to be I centered them up and down now I'm gonna select both of them right click and make them a group now that they're a group, they're kind of treated as one object a little bit. Now I'm going to go back up, select my rectangle, shift, hold down shift, and select my group of circles. And now I'm going to center the group sideways. So they're already centered up and down. Now I'm going to use this button here and center them sideways. And now if I was, you notice it shifted a little bit. Now if I was a little bit off, it actually made them exactly dead center. So they're the exact same distance from the edge to the circle as is from the edge to that circle. So now my... Um, my brain is happy. All right, so we got our outline, we got our circles in place. Now I'm gonna go back to my layers and I'm gonna freeze this. And I can turn it on and off, but I'm gonna freeze it because when I do my designs, a lot of times, if I get going quick, I click on things that I don't wanna click. And by clicking this little lock button right here, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but right next to cuts, there's a little teeny tiny lock. That freezes that layer and now I can't pick it if I even if I wanted to. I can't select it, it's just frozen in place. So it helps me move my other things around and kind of get them in place without worrying about screwing up and clicking that by mistake. So let's go back and look at our picture. So we want to see my name on top and then we want our kind of decoration and some stuff in the bottom. So I'm going to, since I have the decoration out, I'm going to move this into place. I'm just going to kind of freehand this again, get it about where I want. And now, unfortunately, I locked that to unlock it, but that's all right. So I'm going to click that, click the decoration, and then go back, control shift A. It's your one of your best friends in Inkscape, and we're gonna center it. Now, if you look at my other picture, I have I kind of didn't that little flower I didn't use. I just kind of I wanted the line, the curvy parts, but I put my science logo over that. So I'm gonna just, let's do that next. I'm gonna take my science logo. Now, this is actually, if you notice, this one's made out of a bunch of different pieces. Like that, that they're all separate things. So I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna actually gonna highlight this right click and make that a group as well just to make sure I don't grab like one piece by mistake and I'm going to drag this and kind of again so if you notice it's kind of jumping the places I have snap turned on over here um, we go over that in one of the other videos too I'm not going to use it right now I'm going to turn that off because it's kind of annoying me now I'm going to get this about where I want it to be kind of up and down 
Now, if I wanted to, I could use my align. So I'm gonna, I could select the decoration, select my logo here, align it up and down, and align it sideways, and it should be centered perfectly. Now, if you want it somewhere else, you can move it along, but that usually is because I wanted dead center in this decoration to cover up that flower. That's the easiest thing to do is just to align it to it. Now, for the Fabville sign, though, I don't want to align that. Let's make a group of that as well. I want to just throw it over here somewhere. And again, this I could probably freehand but I'm going to at least align it up and down. So I'm going to click the decoration. Go ahead and move it off so you can see what it does. Click the decoration, click the logo, use this vertical align button right here. And now it aligns it up and down. I don't want to align it horizontally because that would put it right on top of this logo, but I want to leave it over there somewhere. All right, that gives us those two things. What's next? So let's throw our number over here and then I can put my name on it and then we will be done. So I'm gonna make another rectangle. Now I'm gonna actually, what, I don't know what layer I'm like, actually, let me, so let's see, this is on the logos layer, the logos layer, that's on the decoration. Just to make sure I was being a good designer. Those are on cuts, that's on cuts, so that's good. So I wanna to go to the, um, I guess this is technically still, well, it's actually gonna be the layer for number. Let's go to the number layer. Again, I'm gonna draw a rectangle about the size that I want. Uh, now I realize that this is below uh, this decoration, I actually want it above, so I have to change my layers a little bit. I have to move my number layer above my decoration layer, so it because I want it to cover up the line. And again, I kind of made this by by eye. You can, if you wanted to make it the exact size, you could. I'm going to decurve this a little bit, so that seems reasonable to me. So I did my outline. Now I'm going to go back up and write some text text button type somewhere my room is 435 uh, what is, oh, it looks like I was typing some Elvis script last okay oddly enough so I want to use something called stencil that's the font I want to use for this so I will change it to that I'm gonna go and just again hold down control and make this bigger so it keeps the ratios now it looks kind of weird that's not what I wanted it's, it looks like that because it has an outline on it so I'm gonna go down to the bottom Shift and select a color. I'm going to select the no color, turn off the outline, and then select the uh, fill color to be just black. So I'll select that. Um, let's, see, let's make this a little bit, oops, a little bit bigger. Now again, I want that to be in the center. If it's off like that, it drives me nuts. So I'll click my back, the um, number background there. Click the number itself, holding shift down. So remember, you select more than one thing by either holding shift. Or you could drag a square over both things. Either way is fine. And I'm going to go back to my align toolbar that we're using a lot. And I want to center it sideways and center it up and down. And I have that nicely in there. And I'm going to actually not, I don't, it's, I'm going to laser cut it. It's not going to be red. I'm going to laser cut this. Let's see what color did I use. Actually, I, the background was black and the number was white. So let's switch that up just so it, oops, so it matches. So I'm going to make the number white. And the background is going to be black. There we go. And now the last thing I want to do is throw my name on here. So again, I'll hit the text button again. Just click somewhere. I'm going to type in, let's see, Mr. Coloni, because that's what they call me. And I'm going to use a font called Colona. Just like that. And I'm just going to drag, hold down control. Remember that keeps the ratio the same. Of, uh, height to width, drag that down until it kind of looks good. And now, when you're putting names on here, sometimes you can kind of move things around, especially if you have a Y in your name. What did I do over here? Yeah, so I put the, the Y, I made it a little bit bigger and dropped the Y down below the Fabville logo just to be a little fancy, I guess. So you can do things like that if you want. Kind of incorporate your other design elements into your actual design, I guess. And again, I want my name centered, so I'm going to click on the outline. I'm going to click on my name and center it horizontally. Let's see, it's a little bit tight there. So I'm actually going to move my Fabville logo to the left a little bit. I'm using the arrow keys this time because I want to just do it piece by piece. So can I click it over a little bit so it looks better? And it looks like we are done. So I have my name. I have the background of this. I have my room number. I got my science department logo, I got the Fabo logo, I have a little decoration in the background, I have to have a couple holes to cut out for my 
uh, just so I can put a bolt through it, put it on my door. Now the last thing, again, if we're going to use the uplog printer, since we, we it prints by uh, sending a line size to 0 0.001 inches, I want to always make sure to do that. Even I, I've used this a lot, and I forget that a lot of times too, especially when you're resizing things. So I'm going to click on my border here. Control Shift F brings up the color dialog again. I'm going to go to Stroke and make the stroke 0 0.001 inches. Again, it looks like it disappeared, but if you look really close, it's there. It's just really small. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ungroup these. Because sometimes when you group stuff and you change their size, it does weird things. So I'm going to ungroup them and make each of these have a stroke size of 0 0.001. And our nameplate is done and ready to be sent to the printer to get cut out. 